It's not a potato cake, it's a codfish cake. Get right. My arm hurts. He needs some pain power. Me. Brown skin girl, your skin just like pearls. You're back against the world. I never trade you for anybody else. Say brown. Hey divas, welcome back to my channel. So today's vlog is going to be how I prepare my Bermuda cup fish cakes and hot cross buns. So if you don't already know, I am a nurse, so I gotta try and make this work in between my shifts. So today is um, April 14th and i am going to be just prepping my um coffee cakes because i do have to work tonight so i'm gonna prep all my coffee cakes i do like fresh coffee cakes so that's why i'll be just prepping them tonight cook them in the morning and then tomorrow i'll do my buns because um i like fresh buns i like everything to be fresh believe it or not so i'm going to go ahead and prep out my fish cakes get that started and I'm just show you guys what I do. The original base of the recipe, to be honest, is from my Nana. Thanks, Gladys. But I just tweak it further. Listen, these little things right here that are um, connected to my eyelids. Y'all see this right there? Ha! Don't come for me, okay? So, um, struggle lashes is any fact. I don't want to pull them out. I miss my appointment. Listen, we're just gonna have to work with it and the her too. Okay, back on track. So I'm going to show you what I do to prepare my coffee cakes and hot cross buns for this upcoming Good Friday holiday. And so yeah, let me just show you what I got. So first things first, we have our codfish. I'm not sure exactly how many codfish cakes I'm going to be making. All I know is that I need a pan for downstairs, a pan for upstairs here with me, and then I'm going to take some to work as well. So, I've got five bags of codfish. This is the codfish that we use here. It's not local codfish, no. So, this is what the codfish looks like. <clears throat> and then I'm going to do three bags of potatoes. Some parsley, thyme, garlic, scallion, and some Bermuda onions. So those will be my ingredients, my main ingredients, I should say. I'm going to throw some seasonings in there, but not too much. Majority of it, the base of it, is just going to be those fresh ingredients. I already started to boil some water. So I have two pots of water going at the moment. This one here, I'm gonna put my potatoes in this one. And then I'm gonna put my coffee in this one. So the water's just getting hot. I'm actually, I don't know. I'm actually gonna go ahead and put my codfish inside of the water now. Um, and let that boil down. So before I do that, actually, what I do is rinse off all my codfish because it is quite salty. It's salted. So I just added my coffee into my pot to start um, boiling and get some of that salt out of it. And so now I'm just going to move on to peeling my potatoes. Now, when it comes to the amount of water in the pot, gauge it, like, put a lot of water, it's going to draw out a lot of that salt, so I don't have to cook it so many times. Um, 
the thing about the codfish is like i cook it to taste i want a certain amount of salt still laugh in the fish you don't want to remove all the salt then you got to put extra salt in it that doesn't make any sense so boil it down so you get the right amount of salt content left in the fish without taking it all out um and then i'm now going to just go ahead like i said and start prepping these potatoes to put in i don't like a potato beef codfish if that makes sense i like a more codfish than potato but balanced at the same time um it's not a fritter it's codfish cake get right all right so let me just go ahead and start doing that because as you can see I got a whole bunch of potatoes to prep. So let's get to it. Another thing is I'm being real gentle with the bag because my Nana actually makes my dish scrubs, what I clean my dishes with, out of this stuff right here. Well, she says she ain't doing it anymore. She says she's gonna teach me. So that's why I'm trying to be gentle with it so that I can preserve the bag that this is in. My nephew should be coming home in the next hour. So I'm gonna see if he wants to have our auntie. I don't know. I don't want my potatoes to go wrong while they wait to go in the hot water so that's why I'm just gonna cut them all in four as I go and I'm just gonna drop them in the water just regular lukewarm water that will prevent them from turning brown Later. Alrighty. Hold on. So now, now what I'm gonna do is just clean up a little bit. I'm gonna rinse off these. Oh, I'm making a mess. I'm gonna rinse off these potatoes and then add them to the boiled water. And yeah. So I have my potatoes boiling now. I'm not gonna put any salt or anything in it because I don't need it. I'm gonna just chuck on my codfish. So I just tasted the codfish. It's still quite a bit salty. So I'm gonna empty out this water and put some more in. Fish and my potatoes cooking. I'm now just gonna prep all of my other ingredients. So I'm gonna cut up these scallions and onions. Um, as I said before, I really don't um, know how much we're gonna eyeball it, but I'm gonna put all of these three in my codfish cake. Um, these three onions in my codfish cake, and I will be using probably all of this scallion as well. I'm going to use two of the stalks of the onions. I think it gives more flavor as well. <laughs> so let's get going. All right, so go ahead, cut up your onion. I like to cut my onion pretty small. I don't want to be chopping on big pieces of onion. 
So I do like to cut them up pretty, pretty small. And then they cook batter once um, inside everything because I don't cook them in advance. The smaller they are, once they get fried, it cooks down better. In the street, wanna party all night. No, no, no time for sleep. Let's go to it. It's like a movie. When we party, 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 police can move me. Parade of the bands to drink in me on. Yalla, wine up, wine up, wine up, wine up, wine up, wine up. All right, now I'm gonna move on to the stalks of my onion. Can you please fill it up? The vets in Westside When drinks in my car Let's turn it up I'm now just going to check back on these potatoes As I said, they had about 5 more minutes left for them Alright, I'm now just going to do my scallion and then I'll focus on my garlic. When the weekend is over, believe you wanting more. On the lava in the water, it's a great time for sure. So you are so good, junkie. Just like me, right here we need a be. Hope you will agree. Let's go, Juve. It's like a movie. Before I do that, I'm going to strain off the water from the potatoes so that they don't continue to cook. Alright, I normally don't put butter in it, but I am this time. Not traditional, definitely. Being that it's in the fridge all this time, I'm just gonna put it in so it can melt down and soften up before I get started. I'm going to move on to my garlic and I think I'm going to do half of this, just what I put apart, I just broke it apart, half, I'll put the whole half inside of it, I'm going to go here then clean it all up first. Though. For that I'm going to use this, I can't remember, oh it's a zaster, I'm going to use the zaster. Um, I think it pulls out more flavor than just chopping up, to be honest. And actually, I'm not going to zest it just yet. I'm going to zest it directly into the pot. Save me some time. And after that, I'm pretty much done. I'm going to chop up this um, garlic. Pull as much off of the harsh stalks as possible and then chop up. That's the most tedious part. I hate preparing the garlic. The time sorry got any time off the hard stalks is just time consuming put that aside then i'm gonna get to prepping my time and i will be using just one whole one I'm just going to finish doing this as you can see okay and then lastly on the list for me to do is this um parsley so I'm just gonna grab a few bunches of this and rinse it all right so there is that and then what I'm gonna do to get just the end it's gonna Tear it off as close to the end as possible. So I only want the leafy part. Yes, I could just take my knife, but oh shoot, the TV hood on. I must say, I do like um, when the fish cakes can set up first and they're not so soft um, prior to frying. Then because they hold together a little bit better in the frying pan. 
So I'm just going to roughly chop this all up. Combine my codfish and my potatoes. Okay, so look at my little bit of codfish. That's my little bit of codfish, but so, it's so salty. That's why it needs a lot of water. Well, I put in a lot of water so that I didn't have to mix so much. And there are my potatoes. So now what I'm going to do is gradually add in. I'm going to pre actually I'm gonna pre um, break down some of this codfish and then I'm gonna slowly add the potato to it. It is quite a bit of potato and I said I don't like potato the codfish cakes so that's why I'm gonna add a little ingredient at a time and then I'm gonna grab my eggs as well. So I didn't have these out earlier but eggs doing it as well that's gonna be my combining agent so let me get to it. about half of my potatoes in. I'm gonna go ahead and start mashing. And you want to make sure that they're all still hot. Well you want to make sure to keep your potatoes hot warm so that it makes it easier to mash. And that butter that you saw me put in there earlier that has all melted. Alright, that's not all of the rest of my potatoes, but it's only a little bit left. I'll show you how much is left of the potatoes. This is actually how much I have left of the potatoes. So now I'm going to do my egg. And I'm actually going to do six eggs. The shit. I've been busting on these holes that I almost on my lip. I'm legit. Got the seats that prove I'm that bitch. When I step in, I declare my name. Be I be on that list on my name. You can see some hoes just do it for the fame. I do it so my mama gets the champagne and private planes. That's game. I really think these niggas are to blame. Acting like they little bitch. So I, I already did three whole eggs. I know I'm going to do just the egg yolk. Don't forget the sunshine. But girl, she walk like a champion oh, When you talk about me, please don't forget the sunshine Dress cleaner than the rims on a bench They say I'm finer than a 10 out of 10 And I taste sweeter than honey out the hen Making man squeal like a pig in a pen I'm the real deal, skin caramel Now I'm gonna go ahead and continue mashing this together And I'm actually going to put my stir top on low. Now I'm just going to do a quick taste before I put anything else in it. Definitely don't need no more potatoes. Here I'm going to put about two more eggs in it. And that again is just gonna be the egg yolk. I'm gonna show you guys this. Can't remember what it's called, but I saw it on something and they said it's supposed to take it off. I'm gonna be able to show you. So all the eggs have like oops, all the eggs have like this little white little vein coming from it. Try not to break it. So all the eggs have like this white little vein coming from it. Take that off. 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 Take that off.
think you can see it. Can you see it? Anyway, if you look in your egg the next time you're cooking it, it's a little vein there that can come out. I always do half of everything first because you can never take out half of these scallions, half of the onion stalk, half of that thyme. I'm going to take three of those drop garlic. And I'm just going to use the mandolin and grate it right into dish okay so then garlic powder onion powder and then I'm also going to add a little bit of I always put a little bit of curry in mine helps with color and a little bit of flavor as well so that's what it will be. It's definitely done to taste. That's all I can say. Do it to taste. Add a little bit, add a little bit more, taste as you go. Onion powder. Garlic powder. purpose and then I have two types of Cory this is this it says Jamaican style but dear Cory but I actually have authentic Jamaican Cory I guess you want to call it I'm gonna put some of this in along with this Island Spice Cory. I'm gonna mix that up. Could use some garlic salt. <clears throat> A little bit more curry I'm gonna put in it.
and some of this um Maggie Old Purpose seasoning. Now I am gonna put in the rest of the thyme and the parsley. Don't think I need any more onion. But I am gonna eat add some more scallion and the rest of this garlic. One small one and a big one. I'm just gonna do the small one and leave the big one. I might not need it. Put this up again. Don't need no more curry or all purpose seasoning. I just needed something else. I'm gonna put some more pepper in it. All right, my sister should be up her way up the road with my dad or my mom. So I can um, put these in a foil pan. Get them in the fridge for tomorrow. All right, so I'm actually gonna use this. Sorry, wasn't recording. Gonna use this ice cream scooper so that they're all uniform and put them into this empty foil pan. So tomorrow, we're good to go. In a way we lose it. There's something different about us. And the reason why we stay, stay. Okay, so this pan is able to fit 12 comfortably. Oh, I need parchment paper. Need some of this. I'm gonna use one more layer so that they don't stick. So that's why I put on the parchment paper. And go ahead with my. There's something different about us. Okay, we're all prepped up for tomorrow to just fry all of them up. It looks so delicious. All right, so that concludes this portion of my Good Friday prep. My cupfish cakes are pretty much done, all prepped. Just gotta fry them tomorrow. Part two tomorrow. See you guys in a little bit. Bye. All right, guys, welcome back. So today is the 15th, and as I said, I'm going to finish making my hot cross buns today. I already did my cupfish cake prep yesterday, so today I'm just gonna fry those up. So my mom is actually gonna help me with cooking this stuff up because at some point I'm gonna go and take a nap. So what I'm gonna do now is just season up some flour to fry the fish cakes in. Um, there isn't a measurement as I did yesterday, it's just eyeballing everything. I have quite a few fish cakes to do, so that's why I'm putting quite a bit of flour here. <clears throat> to the flour, I'm gonna add some paprika and some dill bay seasoning. Cause if you watch my other vlog, my other cooking vlog, I say it, if you're black, you should know about some dill bay. So being that it's fish cakes, I don't want it to be too salty. So I put a little bit in already. Now I'm just gonna add some of this paprika to it and that's just gonna help with the color. Not too much the taste per se. And then close that up and shake it around. Um, I do a little bit first 
as you remember from yesterday I said last is more so add a little bit as you go taste add some more as opposed to trying to put everything in and then it's all either too salty or whatever the case is and you can't take it out after that right so I put a little bit in her I'm gonna fry one fish cake taste it and then if I need to add any more seasoning to this flour to round out the flavor profile for my um, fish cake, then I would, but for now, that's all I'm gonna put in. Now I've already prepped my fish cake, so I'm just gonna go ahead and show you how I cook them to the nice and good and brown, and then we're good. Growing up, you're growing old, you like it passing by. And then we're good to go. That is my fish cakes cooling out for a little bit. I don't like to put them directly on napkin because it makes them soft and soggy. So I prefer to put them on the cooling rack like this and let them cool down before I place them in the foil pan. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and get started on my rolls. Rose, you can do them however you like. Some people like raisins, some people don't like raisins, some people like icing, some people don't. I think I'm trying to do some icing this time around because I usually don't do icing. But they're definitely going to have raisins in them. So let me show you what I'm using. Got some sugar, flour, milk, some eggs, um, salt, cinnamon, old spice, nutmeg, some yeast to help them rise. Molasses, raisins, and some butter. So yeah, that's going to be all of my ingredients. And I'm just going to go ahead and get started. I'm coming in from work. I'm not too tired, but you know, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, let me just go ahead and get started, okay? Alright, so now I'm just going to get started. And I'm going to start with my preparing my milk and yeast. So... My Nana's recipe, or the recipe she gave me, I don't know if it's her recipe, I don't think it's her recipe, she got it from somewhere. But, um, recipe says one cup of milk to 12 to 18 buns. So, I plan to do three. So, two cups there. And then I'm gonna use this for an extra cup, but I'm gonna use actually this other measuring cup to transfer over. Now I have to take out a quarter of milk, a quarter cup of milk, and set aside for the yeast. So being that I'm doing three, that's three quarts of a cup. We're doing this in bulk. So. My three quarters of a cup and I'm just gonna set that aside and I'm gonna put the yeast in that to finish rising and now I'm gonna add in my extra cup to make the three cups being that I took the three quarters of a cup out of the two cups that I had. I already took the three quarters of a cup out of the two cups but it's supposed to be a total of three so I'm gonna add back another cup of milk That's going to make up for what I had already taken out. Hopefully it fits. Yes, it fits. I'm not a baker. I don't mind cooking, but bacon ain't my bean. So this is my remainder. I'm going to set this aside now until I'm ready for that. And I'm going to add now my yeast to this milker. The recipe actually calls for one yeast packet. But it's still a little bit cool and I actually want my ones to rise. So I'm going to go ahead and put double the yeast to be on the safe side. 
Oh, I have messed my thought. I gotta heat up this milk stuff. So I'm gonna put it in the microwave for a little bit. So your milk has to be lukewarm, not hot, not cool, in order to activate the yeast. It rises better when the milk is lukewarm. So being that I just pulled it out of the fridge, I'm just popping it in the microwave for 30 seconds. Hopefully that's long enough to take that chill off of it. All right, wash my hands and to be honest, to test this, I just dip my finger in it and it's perfect temperature. So now I'm going to take these yeast packets and as I said, I'm doing three dozen rolls. So it's gonna be six if the original recipe takes one, I'm just gonna double everything. So that's three in there already. And now I'm gonna put three more to make six. As I said, you don't have to put as many, but my house is a bit cool. So I actually want them to rise without a problem. So I'm just gonna put double. So now, now I'm just gonna take this and rest it off to the side and let that do what it's gonna do. All right, so for my vet ingredients, I'm now going to take the remainder of that milk, pour that in. Then I'm going to add to that my butter and molasses. So it's actually three tablespoons of butter per um, three tablespoons of butter per recipe per dozen. So that means I need three, six, nine tablespoons. So I'm just gonna melt that first. All right, so my bottle, I'm gonna add that to my milk now, cause that's all melted. And then to that, I'm going to add what I said about it. Oh, I'm gonna add my eggs and my molasses. So here's my molasses. And it says one tablespoon, so I need three tablespoons. One, two, three tablespoons of molasses, and then I gotta add in the egg. And it adds for one egg, so I gotta put in three eggs. Now you never don't like washing dishes, so guess what? We're using the same thing that we had the butter and milk in. I'm gonna crack these eggs in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all three. The same way. And then I have one more to do.
so cute. And I want to show you guys this memory that I'm talking about. It's just difficult to show you. Mm. Alright, at that last yolk in. And that's all of my wet ingredients. I tell you that I did a test of fish cake, so it's my first fish cake. Cheers! Yeah, but it tastes good. Now I'm just gonna mix this up. I don't have a hand mixer. So, oh, I have a whisk. I have a whisk, guys. So I'm just gonna mix that all up. Okay. Now I'm gonna take my dry ingredients. And I don't have a really big um, mixing bowl, so I'm just gonna use this pot because it's nice and deep. I'm gonna worry about nothing spilling out. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those bad ingredients in there. All right, so as I said, I'm gonna continue. And so in here with my dry ingredients, I'm gonna start with my flour. I'm just gonna start with the flour that you already have over. And it's gonna have pops of flour. All right, so my three measuring, my measuring cup is a cup and a half. So let me get my half a cup as well. So that means I will have a total of three, four and a half cups of flour. It's a half a cup of sugar, and I'm doing three, so I need three cups of sugar. One, two. Oh, I had just about enough. Three cups of sugar, a half a teaspoon of salt, but I'm using pink salt, and it's a little, it has, it's just a little bit more saltier than regular iodized salt. So instead of doing a half, I'm just gonna do a quarter teaspoon. Which is pretty much like a pinch of salt. And I'm gonna do three. One, two, three. Now moving on, I'm going to add in my cinnamon, which is one teaspoon. So that makes it three teaspoons of cinnamon. Now I'm just gonna add in my Old Spice and Nutmeg. So it's a half a teaspoon of Old Spice. So that's times three, two, three. Now I'm gonna add in my Nutmeg. Do I have enough? Yeah. One, two, three. And it's supposed to have cloves. I ain't got no cloves, so we're not gonna worry about with that. 
And that's it. Mixing up these dry ingredients and then I'm going to go ahead and add this to the wet ingredients. I'm being lazy. I said I don't want to wash any dishes, but my other whisk is um dirty, so I have to. A real baker has two of everything. Eh. Okay, I've mixed together all my dry ingredients now. After I do that, I'm going to add it to my wet ingredients, as I said. Gonna add a little bit at a time though. I'm not gonna add it all at once. Now I'm gonna go back to using my spatula and at some point I will be getting here with my hands. So don't come for me in the comments. It needs to get done and it needs to get done right. All right, so I'm just changing the direction so you guys can see. So I just added in some of the flour. I'm just gonna begin to mix that up. How many cups of flour did I do? But it's three cups of flour for one. So that means I'm supposed to have nine cups of flour how many i say a four and a half four and a half cups of flour i think i did four and a half guys because i'm like this ain't enough flour i need a four and a half cups my mistake so i have to add in it's supposed to be three six nine ten and a half I have to add in an extra six more cups of flour because I only did four and a half. Because I'm like, this ain't enough um, um, flour. So I'm going to go ahead, put this back to the side. So I did four and a half cups already. As I said, I'm going to add six more because it's supposed to be ten and a half. So that's four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Oops. Nine. I got one more to put. Ten. Okay. So now that I finished adding the rest of the flour. can go ahead and mix that to what I already had. Oops, making a mess. Now I'm gonna add in some more of this flour. That's better. Now it's starting to look like how it's supposed to. Cause I was like, where's the rest of my flour? See that color from the molasses? Making it look right. 
Now my nana always said me don't over mix. Yeah. Your stuff from rice. So I did that. And then as you can see, this is my yeast mixture with my um, lukewarm milk. And as you can see, it started to rise some. So I'm gonna now add that in here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and finish mixing this up. And this is where I am going to start using my hands and try not to make a mess. Okay, rings are all, I've had already washed my hands, so now I'm just gonna mix all of this together. And it still feels wet. I'm now gonna just add in um, some more flour. This is what my nana would have done. Okay, this seems to be correct now so I would say I probably just add in another cup it's about another cup I just added and I still think it's a tad bit too wet I'm gonna add in some more So that's about a half a cup. So yes, I want it to be not dry, but it still shouldn't be sticky. Yep, this is what I'm trying to get. All right, so I finished mixing up everything. Is that the consistency that I want? Good thing I did it before, so I know what consistency I'm looking for. But my Nana called me and she suggested to just put some, melt some butter, and just um, put it over the top to add some flavor, I'm guessing. So that's what I'm about to do now. Okay, so as Nana said, I'm gonna brush some of this butter, some melted butter over the top. While it's in here. Okay, and then now I'm gonna just cover this over with some parchment paper and put it in my bedroom. So I got some wax paper and I just placed it on the top. It's not pressed on heavy or anything, it's just resting there. As my rolls rise, then the wax paper will rise with it. I'm just gonna get something else to keep that temperature um, insulated in here. So I'm just gonna use a blanket or something to keep it set. So, there we go. Okay, so I'm in my bedroom now, and as I said, I have my heater on because it is quite cool. So I have my heater on, and I just covered it over to help insulate some of that heat. I'm gonna leave it for about 20 to 30 minutes, I think the recipe calls for, and then I'll give it a check just to see if it's starting to move yet. I'll see you guys back here. All right, hopefully the noise in the background from my oven stove top isn't too loud, but, um, so I have the dough now. Once it starts to rise a little bit and move, that's when I go ahead and start to divvy it up. So 
so I have my dough as I said once it starts to move then that's when you want to start kneading it I don't know I think it was too cold I don't know how much I'm gonna get out of this didn't rise too much in my opinion but we're gonna see how much we're gonna get at the same time I'm gonna go ahead and put in the raisins when the trap beat starts to play dance with me make me sway like a lonely ocean hugs I'm also just gonna, just gonna measure them to make sure I get even sizes. I'm gonna get my scale. And I think I'm supposed to be doing four on throws. Let's check. Um, rows should be each three on throws. Let's see. This dude's got me so messed up, meaning in my feelings as well as drunk I love this way to trap me, sag in the back of my mind, I'm a trapper, babe It's the only thing that keeps me sane when the only niggas are around your lane But heaven knows it's the way it goes, so we truck along with our hearts and toes, cause Alright, so this is how many I ended up with. I want to say I could have got more, but because my dough didn't rise nicely like how I wanted it to, this is how much I ended up with. I still ended up with my three dozen at minimum, and then a few extra. So now I'm just going to cover these and let them rise a little bit again, and then I'll place them in the oven to bake. But I'm going to preheat my oven to 275, and then I'm going to put them in there for... 30 minutes total, I believe. But I'm gonna have to play with the temperature because my oven temperature is a little bit different from my Nana's. So I'm gonna try 15 minutes at first, or 275, then I'm gonna swap over the top to bottom, and then I'm gonna crank it up to 375 for another 15 minutes, and hopefully they get done finished by then, but I'll just keep an eye on them. But it should be a total of 30 minutes in total. I do have a keep warm setting already on my oven, so I'm just gonna put that on in terms of temperature wise. So that these can rise a little bit being that my house is still a little bit on the cool side and to help speed up the process a little bit um i'll put them in there for about five minutes and just keep an eye on them turn on the light so that's why i ended up putting them in the oven as opposed to just covering them over to help help them rise now all right so here i'm trying to make icing i've never made icing before so bore if your girl she's looking a little bit watery I didn't think I put a lot in, but early ideas. Oh um, yeah, she looking a bit runny. <laughs> hey y'all, know what I'm doing, you know? All right, so I'm gonna add some more of this icing sugar. I don't think my mama's gonna get back this bigger icing sugar because at this point, there's no measurement. 
So it's a trial and error. Don't come for me. Watch TV. So we're going to try this. My bun should be done. I don't know. We're getting thick. We're getting thick. Look at that. Ow. It's just going to run right off and look clear. It ain't going to look like icing. Okay, a little bit more. Okay. Let me check my bun. I don't know. I'm doing too much, guys. That's my mama's fault. You know I'm getting blamed on us. They don't look too dark, but they could have been a little bit lighter. I'm pretty sure they taste good there. All right, guys. So these are my buns right out of the oven. Hopefully they stay soft. As you know, she, she's not a professional. Okay, I know about these little, these little um, crusty things over here, but you know, those are the little extra ones. So they're a little struggleish. But yes, and then I'm just gonna add my icing to it. See. The top rack is a little dark, so as you can see, these ones towards the back, a little on the darker side, but I think that we should be straight. I'm coming over here, cause Chef D is helping me out with the icing. Looks like we met the right consistency now. So I'm gonna now just take that and drizzle that along my buns. Alrighty, so my mommy wants hers without any icing. So those are her plain ones. And then look at my cute little crosses. They look so cute. They're a little struggleish, but they look cute. Now feeling something I haven't before. Look at us, no dancing now, skin to skin. If you keep this up, then I'll let you in. Cause you have a way with me like no one. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video with me making my hot cross buns and fish cakes. Had a little mishap-ish with the hot cross buns because it was quite cool. So they didn't really rise how I wanted them to. And then of course now the sun is up extremely and it's super hot and warm. So this is just things you have to go through when you're living on a tropical island. I think I have seen a few um, of these videos making the fish cakes, but I from what I remember, I think they're like from a while ago. There's nothing recent. So you don't have to make them exactly how I made them. You can tweak them and make them to your style if you wish. Like I said in the beginning, they are heavy on the potato side, um, mixed with the codfish. So it's not like a fritter and flat um, and fluffy like a baked something with a lot of flour. So it is a completely different texture and flavor to be honest. So hope you enjoy it. Leave a comment in the comment section. Let me know if you try and make some, if you want to know something else, if you have any questions on times or measurements or anything like that that I may have missed out. Let me know and hope to see you guys again. Oh, I'm thinking my next vlog is going to be on Sunday. So yeah, stay tuned for that one. Talk to you guys later. Bye.